and welcome to The Good, The Bad and The What The Fuck, volume unknown for Christian Sailor. It's been a while since I've done a Christian Sailor one, um, and I've got a load of films I even bought back about two, maybe even for a year ago when I did the original ones, um, like Freaky Diggy and Without Men, I like bought, never opened. Um, again, it's time getting around doing them. Now, I wasn't planning on doing a Christian Slater. In fact, I filmed the first part of Nicolas Cage, again, volume unknown. And I'm going to do Nicolas Cage, Christian Slater, and by the looks of it, John Cusack. So I'm going to try and keep these in order. And I'm going to try and do it easy as possible. So, um, <laughs> I needed another movie for the Nicolas Cage, so Wind Talkers, I need to dig that out. So that'll be the 10th, and obviously that'll be in Christian Slater. So hopefully I haven't done Wind Talkers. I mean, I can't remember seeing Wind Talkers for a very long time. Um, and Hot Tub Time Machine 2, I put it on the other night and I watched it and um, while well, I was in and um, to be honest with you it was like I'm sure Hot Tub Time Machine has been in Nicolas Cage, um, Nicolas Cage, Christian Slater um, but it kind of like because I watched it I thought well I'll justify it this time properly I love the original, I think the original has got some absolute charm to it and I come along the era of like the answer to Hangover that was tagged to be John Cusack, you know, that he's associated with, uh, like, producing the first one and how John Cusack was, like, he always has a big bubble come back. If you look at the 80s, he owned him. Uh, Gross Point Blank was sort of the 90s one. And Hangover, sorry, you know, it's a hot tub time machine was sort of the 2000s. Um, you know, what he just has this resurgence, he really carries the 80s. He's missing from the second one, because um, Kujax took a lot of paychecks recently. Um, he is there in flashbacks, so obviously they've kind of acknowledged it. He should have had a fucking cameo. Like, it, it, I mean, it makes no sense while Cusack's not in it properly. Um, Chevy Chase is even back and stuff like that. Goes in the future, tries to be more ridiculously more violent. He's only a 15, which is kind of shocking to think. I would have said it would have been an 18, um, especially some of the stuff. You know, like, it just doesn't have the charm. I think the whole go back to the 80s works going in the future and all that, and like the advancements and stuff. And um, Christian Slade is in it as a game show host, and I think he's great. He's a great, um, ma maniacal guy, especially when they're making each other like have sex on the screen and stuff. And it's like, what the fuck, man? But yeah, um, it was absorbed. Um, I would have probably, think, well, I think they just capitalised on the success of the first one. There won't be a third one. I think they're trying to wrap it all up. Um, again, shame that John Cusack's not in it. So This is Christian Sayer, The Good, The Bad and The What The Fucks. Volume Unknown. And the first one is Hot Tub Time Machine 2. Okay. Next movie for Christian Sayer. I've literally just gone straight into it, haven't I? You know, there was a little jump cut, but you know, I'm still doing it. Um, this is the main reason why I've decided to do Christian Sayer. Um, because last night I was... Uh, talking to Brit on the phone and The Wizard was added to Netflix. Oh yeah, my God, The Wizard. Now, I think everyone over here seen The Wizard when they were kids. It's also known as the play uh, not PlayStation, Nintendo advert, Super Mario. I never had a SNES. I was always a Mega Drive kid. Um, I was playing Moonwalker rather than Michael. Um, rather than going around looking for like, fucking mushrooms to power up. Um, I seen this movie as a kid. Um, and you know it was just all the rage, Nintendo and stuff, and there was another reason why I was pumped about it. But like Fred Savage is in there, he fucking hell, Fred Savage, and he's he's worked really hard. And went on, Christian Slater, the the bigger brother, and then this is just before like the likes of Cuffs and Pump Up the Volume. He's great in the role. Um, I'm sure it's the dad from My Name Is Earl as well. Um, and the story is basically this kid. So there's two brothers, and then there's twins. The families have separated. One of the twins dies. The other twin becomes quiet, and basically just wants to go to California. Just wants to keep going back to California. Um, and Fred Savage is like he, play, he plays Corey. He's like no, nah. like he's my brother. I'm looking after him. There's a family turmoil. It turns out the kid's a wizard on the computer. The old joystick and the button bashing. And um, obviously, again, it's all Nintendo based games. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles makes a little cameo, and that underwater like. Um, we used to get chucked by the eels, and you used to have to get um, go to machines to get up, uh, air. The turtles, uh, yeah, amphibious, no. Yeah, um, yeah Christian Sarah and his dad, they're they're following. There's a um, child investigator who's 
you know, he's trying to track them down there, dueling off, slashing each other's tyres, dramming each other's, smashing their coats. And the guy from um, Slater, from Last Action Hero, and um, Battery's not included, it's in there, is slappy. The girl in it, some of her acting at the end, it's like, really? No wonder I haven't seen you in anything since. She's probably in loads. But as I was say, um, and then just the climax, obviously Super Mario Brothers 3, but for me, watching it back in just the moment that they are in Universal Studios and the fucking King Kong ride, the original King Kong ride. Now I was lucky enough to actually go on the King Kong ride when I was a kid, it scared the fucking shit out of me and no word of a lie, it was 91 when I went on it, so it would have been the year after and it was just class and like, <laughs> going off the King Kong ride. I mean, I should have done the old room of all the King Kong stuff, but like, you're going around and like, the fucking light comes on the wall and you're in the you're in the, the shuttle and it's Kong's shadow and then he's just like, Rawr, hanging off the bridge trying to get you and you're like, fuck. And then, oh, he's coming back around and he's like, raw. And the bit where he comes back around is really, that's what they use in this movie and it's just fucking class. Absolutely class to see King Kong, because normally the Jaws ride, you've got the Jaws ride and more rats, you've got the Jaws ride and... Escape from LA, you've got the Jaws ride and quite a few things. You know, Jaws ride's always popular to pop up and stuff, or Earthquake and stuff like that, but to see King Kong in their fucking high time, I mean, I wish they would do that more. I mean, everyone's wanting 3D animation and shit now, but like going back and just remembering these rides and stuff, they should just have a retro section, you know, but yeah, uh, it was great to see. Um, the Wizards popped up a few times, I've seen it at Horicon. Um, Blu-ray import, again I can't play Blu-ray imports, I've got a few Blu-rays from America that unfortunately don't work over here. Um, so, it's not worth the risk. Um, on that note, uh, Matt Davies did point out that it, at some point I should have had a multi-region. At the end of the day when my uh, Blu-ray player packed up, I think it was the start of the year, me and Brittany had to go all the way down to the Metro Centre on my day off to get a, a Blu-ray player from Argos, nowhere sells them. The supermarket was like, what do you want a Blu-ray player for? Excuse me, Mr. Manager of the supermarket? I mean, why? You sell Blu-rays and want a Blu-ray player? You know, why do you need an aisle full of towels? You're a supermarket. Do I have a Blu-ray player on that one shelf? No. What a fire stick for your bum hole? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really, really frustrated with that supermarket guy. <laughs> Before you say anything, yes, I do own a shirt. I did have a fucking t-shirt. I literally just got in from work. So yeah, I do want to show you. This is going in Christian Slater, the good, the bad, and the what the fucks. Christian Slater, Hot Tub Time Machine 2 has appeared in it. Um, I believe this has been in Christian Slater's. They're not that fresh, but this should be... Da -da 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 -da. Hard rain on Blu-ray. Never owned this. Just a quick check this disc. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Funny story about this, though. So I absolutely love this film, have multiple copies on VHS, snap boxes, got an amazing fucking bitchin' ass fucking hard rain poster. Um, got the laser disc, it's more the red Christian Slater running away with his head turned. <laughs> fucking love that artwork. Um, and um, I think it was when we used to have the 5 of 30, so I'm talking a couple of years back at work. And I went for Broken Arrow, and this like, and then I was going to get uh, hard rain. Fucking hell, I'm fucking wanted anyway so i wanted hard rain and i ordered it and casper cancelled it and then i reordered it and casper cancelled it because he has he has to but i was always giving casper some grief so anyway just one of those things right right get it on the back burner and um <laughs> like i went on music magpie after i had that fucking crazy idea of ordering loads of van damme films off there and it was 40 fucking pound on blu-ray i was like what like what and it's obviously it's discontinued and even on eBay, people are fucking bidding like fuck it. And I was like, what the fuck? It's only hard rain. It's got no extra features. I mean, it's what the fucking didn't it like? But it, you know, it's a stripped back, bare bones, deserved. I mean, it Morgan Freeman. It should be Christian Slater, Morgan Freeman. But like, I was just what the fuck? Like, totally shocked, shocking all. And then um, it popped up on uh, another site. I was seven pound posted, and uh, I'll see where you got. <laughs> what I was going to pay for it anyway. Just wanted to know from your collection because it's going to be a podcast for the podcast series. Um, but it's had its own, very own uh, fast forward review. So I'm guessing it has popped up because Christian Sailor, I think we're on the third or fourth. But um, 
Obviously, prior to the moment, Nicolas Cage, I'm halfway through that as you're watching this. Yes, I do own a T-shirt. Um, if it, when my body offends you, I mean, I lost loads of weight at the start of lockdown, then started putting it back on. There you go. Is that better? Am I less offensive? Um, yeah, um, I started Nicolas Cage, and then I'd done a sort of spin-off in the John Cusack. They're, they're all here, actually. So, yeah. So, we started with Nicolas Cage. And then Hot Tub Time Machine was watched drunken one night, but obviously that's John Cusack, sort of, and um, Christian Sailor. So I did little random reviews. So we've got Trespass, Run, A Lord of War, Shadow of the Vampire randomly, Bringing Out the Dead, and it could happen even for Nicolas Cage. So the idea was Christian Sailor and Wind Talkers, um, Nicolas Cage, oh fuck. I dug all my VH, uh, DVDs out looking for Mortal Kombat for a podcast the other night. I was literally. There's loads of Christian Sater films back there I've never actually fucking opened. You can, I think you can see Cuffs. Big fan of them anyway. So yeah, anyway, um, I was doing them and then obviously I decided to start doing an Arrow, Good, the Bad and the What the Fuck, so I'm three films into that, but again, getting muddled up. But again, rather than just me opening that, you know, fucking putting it on the shelf and randomly coming out, at least it's got some place in the Good, the Bad and the What the Fuck, because you can watch this bit and go, what the fuck? So yeah. I just have to remember not to delete it. I'm fucking over the moon because I wasn't going to pay 40 fucking quid for that. It's just random when people just like, you know what I mean? Just fucking things pop out of nowhere like that. But yeah, it's only, it's, well, I mean, you don't see it, but 40 fucking quid? No fucking way. See you in the next bit. Right, fresh review. Just done Wind Talkers for Christians. Oh, fucking Christians. This is for Christians, say that. For Nicolas Cage. So it's gone straight into it. Not going to be as epic as Rant is, and uh, but possibly believe, I can't even get my fucking words out, that Wind Talkers has been good about the what the fucks, but it might have been, but it wasn't this version. This is the director's cut, so I'm going to cheat. So if Nick, if you're watching these, and God, it must be two years ago since I did a Christian Sater one, and oh, you've already done Wind Talkers, it's the director's cut. I actually sat and started watching this last night in the fear of it being a two and a half hour movie. It's like, oh. And then I watched the rest this morning and I really, really enjoyed it. John Woo, who obviously had done Hard Target and Black Jack, um, did Broken Arrow, Christian Sater. Then he did Face Off with Nicolas Cage, went off and did Mission Impossible. And then came back to do Wind Talkers in an era where we had Spielberg doing Private Ryan and uh, Michael Bay doing Pearl Harbor. We had that era. So we had John Woo. So we had that style on it. And this doesn't really tip it all around the story a lot. You know, it shows a great loads of shots of Utah. It's a story about the Navajos, the people who are brought in to be the code breakers, have this special code against, I'm gonna say it, because they say it in the film, the Japs. And um, Christian Sater and Nicolas Cage are assigned to look after them. Nicolas Cage has lost his last platoon and basically suffered a perfect eardrum. So he's having problems hearing, kind of tiptoes his way around the tests and ends up in the, um, enrolled in the marines and stuff like that so his job to look after the Navajos. Christian Sayer is really good in this. I generally remember this film Christian Sayer having a very shorter role. This maybe is because I did not watch the director's cut. He's really good in it. Plays a little harmonica and he bonded. Um, gets decapitated so yeah it's Christian Sayer being a good and his head goes flying. Um, I really really enjoyed this movie. Again check out the Nicolas Cage volume 5. I just had a massive rant on this so I kind of feel like I'm repeating myself. But for Christian Sarah, it's kind of like fair play to you, you know what I mean? You come back after working on Broken Arrow, you come back in there, a little support and role, really. And, and does really good what he does on the time. Um, you don't expect him to get killed. I mean, it's a brutal death. I mean, close his eyes, face to black. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? But yeah. So for you know what? We've had um, The Wizard. We've had Hot Tub Time Machine too. It's hot as fuck today. But Wind Talkers is in for Christian Sater, and we will be revisiting for the first time Freaky Deaky and Without Men. They'll be two of the next ones because they were bought on day release again back years ago. It was that long ago the shop I work in has fucking moved, and we've been moved for at least two years because I remember putting this stuff out. So that old, I will be looking at when these came out <laughs> and going, fucking hell, I've had it that long. And finally, they're going to see the light of day within the good, the bad, the what the fuck's of Christian Sailor. So, right, next bit of the video. Okay, welcome back to the good, the bad, and the what the fuck's of Christian Sailor. I think it's volume four. Um, I've been tracking down some Christian Sailor films, some of the Blu rays mainly. 
and then a few I haven't watched. So we've had the Wizard who had Wind Talkers and Hot Tub Time Machine 2, um, which has been in the Christian state as the good, the bad, and what the fucks. So you're following this, obviously, Nicolas Cage, John Cusack, and the Arrows have all been filmed in the twine, and, and I don't normally do that. And I'm going to try not to do that going forward because get on top of them but again it's quite quirky when you look back and they're all all the their review random styles they're all jumping in i'm in a different place i'm wearing something different i've got a t-shirt on I don't have a t-shirt on but this one's for suicide squad hell to pay now dc pushed this quite big because it came out and had a nice steelbook um dc do a lot of stuff when they bring out the animations they normally come like mini figurines and um the dc universe is totally fucked like I know my friend Stebbins says, that's fucking brilliant. I'm like, well, it's like it kind of it's kind of not like because you got like Marvel doing Marvel, and then DC, who you know, it just seems to be like, I don't know, it just seems like a fucking a load of fucking DVDs that fell together and you go right, whatever order going, because you've got the films, and then you've got the TV shows like Doom Patrol, Swamp Thing, like Flash, and they all intertwining shit like that and then you have all the DC animations and they've been doing these for quite a few years like uh, Gotham Knight The Dark Knight Part 1, Part 2 Batman vs. Robin, Son of Batman, um, then you've got the, the Adam West ones that were spinning off, and it's crazy I mean DC's also done a lot of stuff recently with Mortal Kombat as well and like the very edgy, so this is a 15 when it come out, now this came out really close to Suicide Squad and this is what it's like, kind of what the fuck. Now, Christian Slater does a lot of voice work. He has a mint, distinct voice. Um, I think it goes back to all the way down, like Fern Gully and stuff like that. And he's done stuff like Back to the Sea. There's a Mulan, some not Mulan. But this, he's just done a lot. I mean, he's in The Lion King and stuff like that. And I don't think The Lion King and shit like the, the TV series is going to appear on this channel. Um, because I'm not going to go out and, you know... Oh, I might. <laughs> it just depends. It depends if I get another Christian, ten Christian theater films. Um, but anyway, um, this is a what the fuck film because it comes out so close to the film, and in the movie, Will Smith plays Deadshot. Now, in this sh f movie, Christian theater plays Deadshot. So, it goes from a black guy to a white guy, and then Harley Quinn. And you got some other new characters. I think that's Captain Boomerang there. There's a lizard man. Um, Mini Wolverine. Two Faced is in this. Um, the Pig Man's in it. Batman's in it. Reverse Flash is in it from the future, who's basically got a fucking hole shot through his head. And these are fucking violent. Um, the new Mortal Kombat one's very sweary. This isn't sweary, sweary, but like, there's people getting their fucking heads chopped off. There's people getting punched in the face to death. Um, you know, like, Deadshot's blown everyone's fucking brains out left, right, and center. And again, though, it goes from like old school animation to like CGI when it's chasing and stuff like that. So it's a weird blend. As I say, like, they're just messy. The films are messy. Like, I enjoyed Aquaman, but I still think Aquaman should have came long before Justice League because we've just got Justice League and we go, well, we'll deal with these people later on. You know, playing catch up. And then, like, I watched Birds of Prey recently and I was just like, you know, it's very colourful. It's got a nice style to it, but then it's just like they pretty much. You know, Black Mask is in it, but it's just all over the place. It, it wanted to be like a fast track to Deadpool, I think, in a way, you know. So there's a lot of stuff going on with DC, but you've got to give them credit for this. You know, they're not scared to get content out there. They're not scared to cross over. For example, Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're not scared of doing shit like that. I mean, that was fucking uber violent for a 12. Um, but when it comes to Christian Sarah, um, it's going to go in the what the fucks. Because he's voicing it. But, again, because, I mean, it's not... I haven't enjoyed it. But it's not brilliant. But, again, what the fuck doing Deadshot? I mean, again, he gets his on the front, featuring the voice of Christian Sailor as Deadshot. So, you don't normally see that on a lot of the DC stuff anyway. So, I mean, they've really pushed Christian Sailor's involvement in this. so Which is pretty cool to have that. I'd actually seen that before. Um, as I say, it was sitting on the pile for ages. And um, I'd watched it. And at the time, I wasn't... I don't think I was doing... Um, the uh, good, the bad, and the what the fucks, but yeah, just ranting away. This is entry number four, the Christian Slater. Try and get the arrow one finished now. If anyone's keeping track, you can just see the arrow collection creeping in the background. So, yeah, get the arrow one done, and then uh, get some Christian Slater ones done, like Where the Wicked. Um, finally, if you want to watch um, 
freaky tiggy. <laughs> Port of the day came out, never watched it. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you next video. Okay, next up, next up. I can't see anything with sunglasses on. Next up in the Christian Sailor, the good, the bad, and the what the fucks. It is guns, girls, gambling. There's no comma and there's no and gambling. So instead, guns, girls, and gambling. It's GGG, the triple G's, guns, girls, and gambling. Christian Slater and Gary Oldman, Tarantino style violence. So Christian Slater and yeah, Gary Oldman had worked together on True Romance. And this film has a massive Elvis. Has The film is a total Tarantino thing because there's something about this film that's quite quirky on it, right? So I picked this up on Blu-ray. It's not hard to come by, but there's something very clean about this movie, like red eye cameras, it's definitely done, but sometimes you're looking and going, is that green screen or not? And it's all been set out in the desert and it's basically like, it keeps going back on itself and forward on itself and twisting around and Christian Sater once again with his voice, he's fucking class at speaking and his voice carries across um, and he like monologues a lot of stuff and there's a lot of people turn up. Now it's all about this mask. Did I have a mask handy I could hold? Ow. No. Had an idea of just holding the mask up. I'm sure I've probably got a mask somewhere. You know, somewhere in this fucking room. Chair, chairs. But, yeah, it's basically, it's all about apparently a heist of a mask. Yeah, Jimmy Hoffa's in there, but that's about it. So, yeah, anyway, um, it's about hunting for this mask and there's a load of Elvises. Now, every single member of the Elvis group's pretty much uh, famous. You've got... Um, You've got you they recognize the faces, they're not mega famous, but you'll recognize them. Now, there's a lot of racism in this in a funny way. Again, there's a midget Elvis, and he goes, Little people have us. There's an Indian Elvis, and he's Native American. And then there's an Indian, he's going, well, I thought you wanted to be called Native American. He's going, I am an Indian. And it's just, it, it, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And, and again, if you can have tongue in cheek with it, it's perfectly fine. I don't like, at the end of the day, I've always said, everyone's born the same. No matter what you look like, life's life. Enjoy it the best you can in a positive way. That's the way it should be done. So this film's also like Christian Sater basically gets accused. He plays John Smith and um, it keeps bouncing around. Dane Cook's in this as well, who I really like in Employee of the Month, who's sadly enough seems to fall off the radar a bit. Quite a funny guy to follow on Instagram. Um, it goes back and forth. It is quite violent. There's a few definitely green screen scenes. But then there's that scenes where there's like it's black and white and it's red. You know, there's the one negative color. Um, in the shots and stuff like that. Gary Oldman, you know, didn't seem to dial in. Christian Sater was on shit form, Sh not shit hot form, really. There's like, but even like, as this last comes in, she's like, Give me a flashback, what's going on? And it's flashback, and you see him stuck in the car, and his head's peeking out the car. And you've just, you've just seen that when well, it comes full circle dead quickly. But yeah, um, as I say, it looks really nice on Blu ray. It's a film that's came along and gone, you know what I mean? There's a lot of films like this. You either see them, and like, you see them in first wave, oh, fucking blood creek of all things to pick up, and then you just don't see them again, or you constantly see them in Poundland, they're always on the shop, but films like this just disappear. And it's, it's, it's weird, because like stuff like Freaky Deaky and Without Men, which are hopefully going to be on this one, I bought and never watched, because again, I just picked them up. It's like The Wife, the Christian Sailor movie, I correct myself quickly there, but you know, that came out, and I was like, right, that's never like, it's no point buying it full price, because it's got... Is it Glenn Close in it and Jonathan Price and Christian Sailor? It's a period. Like it's it's a I don't know, I don't know if it's a political drama or anything like that, but it's it's basically like right. It's gonna be full price for a bit. It'll drop down quite cheap. It hasn't yet, but it's never not going to not be able to get. So yeah, it's kind of one of those films where yeah. But no, it is. It's very catchy. It's very funny. Uh, it's bloody. Um, the, the women are, are beautiful. Um, and it's just again, it's one of those ones where you're guessing all the way at the end. And does the whole saw thing on a happy endings for all. But yeah. It's all about nicking a mask. Uh, Native Americans. And Elvis Presley's. But yeah. I need to stop standing here. Because this facial hair is just looking super ginger. But yeah. See you in the next one. Okay. The next entry to Christian Sutter. Good, the bad and the what the fox. Is Way of the Wicked. Now I brought this all the way back from New Zealand. I bought this in Welton. At JBI Fried, uh, Fridays. High fives. Um, Vinnie Jones. Um, Christian and Christian Sater. But Christian Sater is literally front and centre. Um, Emily Tennant and Jake Coker. Coker? If Jake Coker is a guy who plays a boyfriend or the wannabe boyfriend in that, he's really good in this. In England, I kind of got a feeling that this has been the Christian Sater, got the bad. 
and then what the fuck because this is volume four i think four i've had a couple of beers i've only had to be setting kind of red stripe um just in the background when i'm editing um monsters of my pocket video if anyone's paying attention to the limbo that is this um i do have it um on dvd it's not being released on blu-ray in the uk and when you get the the uk version it's like half and half vintage ones christian Sir. And it's and Christian Sater, so like him to get front and centre as the priest, it's like, what the fuck? But Christian Sater's been a priest in The Good Shepherd, that's to come on this show, and he was sort of like the mentor, or no, not a mentor, the fucking apprentice, and in the name of the rose, with that whole... So he's been, you know, he's he, he's he's into his uh, biblical stuff, I'd imagine. And uh, I watched this, and like, to be honest with you, it screams TV movie. Um... It's so crisp and clear. It's a good thing, but then it just doesn't flow very well as a movie. It's got a really like obvious score. It's not a very good score. I mean, I was just watching it there. I was at and Vinnie Jones like blasting off. Looked visually class. I was like, yeah, that looks really good. But you know, Vinnie Jones playing a uh, cop out, and he's like, all right, babe. If he said babe one more time, I was gonna fucking scream. So the story is years ago, uh, boy gets into a fight. Um, boy telepathically fucks the other boy up to death chokes to death and it, it's sort of like like the intro hits and it shows you bits of the film that's foreshadowing very tv-ish you know it shows you christian slater and gives him the name check before you even see christian slater and vinnie jones is the the police chief and um it's set years later when the boy comes back to town and there's that whole like who's the new kid jealous boyfriend girl new kid wants the, the girl who's got the jock boyfriend and there's a lot of like, oh, he's evil doing, and he's just like, I don't fuck with me, I'll fuck you up. And you know, there's a lot of like, some really bad acting of people like trying to choke and stuff like that. But again, the guy who plays the the kid from the past, I, I thought he was really good. Vinny Jones, you know, like, I like Vinny Jones, but in here he's just like, stand there, say that, sorry. And he's just went, yeah, well, no, no bother, good picture. Christian Sater. Total like flash in the pan, like played for college or somebody. You know what I mean? Um, he's in and out of this movie. You can see, you can see that they've had Vinnie Jones, Christian Sater back into the productions. Had a week when they've had them to do that one scene, and the rest of the time they filled it up. There's some really nice shots in it, um, but the story ends weird. Nice twist ending if you haven't seen this, but I want to put it in the bad category because there's Christian Sater movies. There's what the fuck movies than this. This has got to be bad because stuff like Final Rights, I really love that movie. And that would be classed as the same kind of thing where Christians just came in, done what he's done and got off to do something else. Because at the end of the day, Hollywood's not always calling. So in the downtime and when you've made your money, you need to fucking pay your bills. You know what I mean? So it's kind of what he's done. But for like, to have him front and centre on the front cover of the Blu-ray from New Zealand is mental. Um... And a holy secret to humanity. Like the whole wicked thing, like the possession and like the fucking stigmata and stuff like that going down and like the constant whispering. I mean, half the time um, I'm entering now and uh, Brits in the other room reading and I was like, half the time, do you say something? Because you can just hear whispering. Um, so that, that that was good. Um, but there's a bit where, like, for example, the, the bad boyfriend, sorry about the spoiler, gets ran over by a combine harvester, like a tractor with no engine. And just the cutaway scenes of the, the blood hitting what looks like someone's just thrown fucking fucking gore against a radiator and like there's just the editing in there is just like what the fuck are you doing like what the fuck um but there's some very eventful uh camera angles and stuff like but yeah it's just been playing away in the background there as i say i have had it before and i've got fears that it has been good the bother what the fuck's but christian was like a very early edition after the two Corys and sort of like i checked the digital graphics and it didn't appear on there, so that's why I was like, right, that's good. So yeah, that's the one after Guns, Girls and Gambling. But yeah, hopefully the next one will be a little bit better. Oh, 1901. Hi, Andrew. Thanks, Carl. Right, welcome back to Good, the Bad and the What the Fox with Christian Slater. Last night I watched uh, the back end of... Uh, Way of the Wicked, um, as you've probably just seen there. But I remember to stop standing there. Brittany's on the phone at work in the background, so sorry about the loudness of the Brit Bow. 
Um, this is quite quickly based on a Stephen King um, before we had the massive surgence or resurgence of Stephen King's work with the it's and this Doctor Sleeps and shit. Christian Slater and Wes Blantley um, who had starred in the final rights together. Now I absolutely love the final rights or the rights to the passage. It's got three different names. I can't remember the third name it's called. And it honestly looks like they've picked Christian Slater up on a deal because I'm sure the guy who's a detective in this is a detective in that way of the wicked. Uh, it looks like it's been filmed around the same time. Um, I had this before on DVD, it, again, it's buried, um, and I picked it up on Blu-ray uh, for a pound on a clear out, so it's G2 pictures, you don't see a lot of G2 pictures around these days. Uh, but yeah, Christian Sayre and Wes Brantley, um, probably giving the evil look, I didn't even think that was Wes Brantley when I first looked at him, I was like, fucking hell, um, love, revenge and death. Now, I think what the story is about this, I think when it comes to about, based on the story by Stephen King, it's a fact that at the part of this movie and pretty much the back end of this movie is about burying somebody alive it's like a vengeance trip um, christian sailor is ruthless in this a lot of it is green screen especially pool man's process in the car and west brandy is a school teacher again following the indian culture around the nirvana wing so again there's a lot of like closeness about rites of passage um and he basically gets on the wrong side of christian sailor christian sailor is smuggling bodies around um and basically it all gets down there there's quite a startling scene where you know, don't, but he, yeah, revenge Stephen King style. Yeah, it kills his wife, didn't he? he absolutely goes mental. Jeff Beasley, was it? We'll see him. Look, check on there. Yeah, there's just something about it. It's very secure. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same agency, probably. But yeah, there's not a lot really going on. Again, set around. You could basically Christian set could have been filming this at the same time as Guns, Guns and Gambling. And to be honest with you. It's a pretty bad movie. Um, again, the end goes on for ages when um, Christian finds himself booby trapped in his car in the middle of the road, like buried. And Wes Brantley's just like, oh, what's going to get you? Um, both of them, I wouldn't say dial in the performances, um, but some of it is really poor. As I say, I was watching it last night while I was at it, and I found myself distracted just watching it and going, oof. I mean, it wasn't as bad as We Are the Wicked, um, but it was along there. I mean, Stephen King written on there, it's obviously going to sell a few, but I think if I delved into it, the short story would have been digging into like, like what someone goes through when they bury somebody alive for vengeance. Uh, 15, as I say, got a Blu-ray release in the UK. Um, as I say, I never actually opened it until last night, so it's going on the pile as watched. As I say, that's another one that exists on DVD. I finally got the Blu-ray. So yeah, very short. As I say, I do apologise about Britpoor. Everyone's got to work. I'm going to try and get another one watched today. I don't know what it is. I think that's summit. I've got a corker for number 10, though. Number 10. I'm going to count how many I've done. Because Wizards 1. So we've got Wizards, Wind Talkers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, yeah. But two more than a corker. An absolute corker for number 10. See you in the next video. Hell. <laughs> so, in 2013 when this came out, I bought it brand new and I've never ever watched it until now. It's been like, I've probably mentioned Without Men multiple times in the Christian Sailor volumes. Um, it's been sitting on this shelf, along with like Freaky Dicky and stuff like that. You see, I'm a big fan of Christian Sailor and again, I'm a sucker for one and get the slipcover. So I just watched this tonight. Well, I was doing some easy editing and some photoshopping, so I was able to absorb this movie. And what the fuck, man! First off, you know, like I mean, I know I go on about the fucking gingerness going on here with this light. This film's got so much fucking glow about it. Um, from what I read in the back of the box, and then from what I've got there, I thought it was set in the past. And then it started off in Christian Slater's on a mobile phone, and it's got pink font. I was like, oh, okay, that's a little bit different. And then you see the big city and you think, all right, and then there's a woman on the phone of Christian Slater and she's getting, well, I'm not going to sugar doss around this review, getting licked out underneath the table. <laughs> While he's on the phone going, okay. Meanwhile, he gets this book and this book's telling the story of this confessions of this priest. And this priest is in this small like town. And I guess this is set across the border in Mexico or New Mexico or somewhere like that. Looks really nice again, the colours there. It's a little bit low in quality, the DVD. Uh, the main star is from Desperate Housewives, I believe, who is um, 
God, I don't even... Eva Longores. Should be Anne Christine Sitter as well, because Christine Sitter is hardly in this fucking movie. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of familiar actresses in this, some really beautiful women in this, but again, it's very... It's getting told through a kid's point of view. And uh, all the, the guys get taken off to war by the soldiers. And it's, all, it's very quick, it's offbeat. And so, so I was watching this anyway. Then it was fucking cringe worthy. I was like, what the fuck am I watching here? So it's all women and Christian Sater. You think he's in the fucking future, and this is a fucking story about, about the past because obviously the small town has no internet, no phones, or anything like that. It's not a television. They're all trying to survive as females together, which again is trying to send a positive message across until the fucking priest decides that, ooh. <laughs> I'm impregnate the entire town. And there's like a montage of this priest who's, you know, he's not a very attractive looking priest in skills. Say so she's a virgin. She doesn't know what to do. And this other woman's like, oh. And then there's a montage of sex scenes. And they're just fucking cringe worthy. The facial expressions of the priest and. Oh, just cringe. Oh. So anyway, the priest runs away after he starts getting raped by them theoretically funny enough and he runs away and um he actually finds christian Slater in the woods and he's like, oh so christian Slater is not in the future and this is it's not doing a fucking lake house it's all happening right now so christian Slater wants to write this story so christian Slater comes to town before christian Slater gets to the town as well everyone's sort of like so it has a love fetish for each other in montages and stuff like that and it's very good and then christian Slater gets to town and says i want to write a story and then some of the guys from the war come back as Christian Sitter saves them and they start rebuilding the life and I was just like what the fuck I couldn't wait for this film to end it was only on an hour and 23 minutes I've actually had the timestamp going for the last 10 minutes because I'm like fucking rather go to bed, watch Deadwood and go to sleep um, it's good on the way for what it is like again for the gay and lesbian community and again Christian Sitter is hardly in it so when it comes to Christian Slater, it's a what the fuck movie, because it should be and Christian Slater. Um, everyone's like gives him the quirky performances and funny little bits there and then, but again, there's the creepiness about the priest and it's just so offbeat. And like again, it's, it's set now, the past, future. It's just confusing. But I can't believe I've had that seven fucking years and never fucking opened it. Mm -hmm. uh, message there, but yeah. Um, when all the men in this small town, remote Latin American mountain village, are recruited to fight in the country's civil war, all the women are left to fend for themselves, led by Eva. They slowly emerge from their husbands' shadows and become un unwillingly founders in a remarkable new society, all female utopia. When men return, along with American reporter Christian Slater, a clash of sexes. And unexpected consequences of funny irritation. Fucking that doesn't happen in the last five minutes. They make the men dress up and doing that and doing all their jobs and stuff like that. So again, it's a power t twist and stuff like that, which is good to see in a film. But when it comes to Christian Slater, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, good to get that one out of the way, actually. It was between that and Freaky Deaky tonight. So hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The wizard, so I've got two more. I know what the last one is, so it's either going to be bound or freaky diggy. Oh, there's a couple on um, I was looking the other night, there's a couple on Amazon Prime. It's one I never heard of when he was really young, and there's a one called He Was a Quiet Man, but it's 2020 director's cut. And I don't know if a quiet man's been it because every time I think of like bound, I looked at bound, and I was like, I'm sure bound was in because it's called Power of Few. But when I checked me, Christian Slater, because there's only three volumes, I think. Um, that wasn't there so might have double checked before I actually bring bound into it but other stuff like um churchill needs digging out um the hollywood years that needs digging out <sighs> i fucking hope in the name of the rose was done because i'm not looking forward to re-watching that but yeah that was without men um as i say i know what it is but when it comes to christian say it's like, what the fuck? And plus the guy was called Gordon Smith. I've got a friend called Gordon Smith. And he comes to town I'm like, hiya, I'm Gordon Smith. And so I say, okay, next movie, Mr. Click.
next movie. I'm actually going to open Freaky Dicky. I only bought it in 2012. It's only been eight years. I mean, still see a look at the shine, shine. Right, I've got to go before the Predator soundtrack really kicks in. Right, Freaky Dicky. Okay, okay, the ninth entry is Freaky Dicky, finally opened after 10 years. From the writer of Jackie Brown and Get Shorty, that makes more sense now. Uh, Christian Slater, it's what the fuck straight away because it's Anne Christian Slater when the movie starts, so he's top build, face slap right on the box. Uh, Billy Burke, Michael Jar White, big star in this, Crispin Glover, uh, there's a couple of famous people in this actually. Andy Dick's in this as well, very awkward seeing this. I think this is set obviously back in the uh, 70s. And um, the, one of the main guys, Billy Blake, is the guy from Mafia who, one of the funniest kids ever, goes to snow called Kane and it goes up his nose. He's the one who always, the, he's the fuck up son in Mafia. It's probably the only thing I've seen him in. Um, it's a very offbeat, um, uses the Quentin Tarantino style, but it's just, it keeps bringing it up. Chapter 1, goes all the way through chapter 10, all the little subtitles. And it's all about like Michael Jar White, the bodyguard, best friend for Kristen Glover's character. Christian Slater is a wannabe actor in it. They're all trying to get money out of Crispin Glover um, and like chased him down. Um, there's a lot of dynamite going around and stuff like that. Obviously, Michael Jar White has obviously had a spin off film. Not a spin off to this, but um, Di Dick Dynamite. That's a certain death's movie in it. That's he called one. Black Dynamite, um, and there's a bit where he's dancing on a dance floor and he keeps flashing up dynamite. And I was like, is this some kind of crossover, maybe? Um, as I say, it's it's based on a novel as well. So when it comes to Christian Slater, it's a what the fuck movie because Christian Slater is barely in it. Um, it's not grounded; it's more loose, you know. It's from the CGI, it's like it keeps coming back, telling the story. There's loads of different people getting to one point at the end, and it's all about trying to get money. Um, it's all light-hearted. As I say, there's a sexual scene with Andy Dick, which is quite awkwardly funny. Um, as I say, there's some really funky designs in it as well. There's a bit where Christine sits smoking a joint and the lass is sitting on the bed, and there's just like this red pipe going into the wall, then it bounces off across the room, some weird paint. And I was like, has Glenn Malpass been available in the 70s? Like, fucking hell. Um, but as I say, like, again, when you, like with this film, I've never seen it since the day I bought it. You know, new release, you might get maybe seven copies back in the day, and you get through them, and it's just not something you've seen. I'm gonna flip cover, open it up. As I say, um, he kind of looks like he's doing the whole uh, final rites, rites of passage, whatever you want to call that movie, the right around, long hair running around with his gun. But um, as I say, it's just all about like a comedy in a way, but I just. Didn't really hit it home for me, as I say, I've like paid quite a bit of attention on this. Um, as I say, as a film though, um, I'm not going to say it's good, I'm not going to say it's bad, because a lot of people might find this funny, but for that, it's what the fuck. Because again, Christian sort of slapped on the box. Uh, crime romp, fantastic cast and dialogue. Pedophile, drugs, scandal, clad women. Bomb Squad expert Chris is disgraced and relegated to sex crimes division in the Detroit Police Department. He is immediately falls for Gretna, Wyatt, an apparent rape victim. The Woody Ricks, a ridiculously wealthy movie producer, turns out to be on the kill list of a psychopathic criminal corp. Uh, Skip Gibbs, Christian Slater, and Robin Abbott. Um, Serve justice on Woody Christmas, keep first, keep him alive, why negotiate an explosive minefield. Only one thing is certain, someone's going to get blown up. Freaky Dicky is a funny, sexy and dangerous look at the dark side of the 70s. I wouldn't say it was that dark. Uh, filled with some ever more rememberable characters, as well as a trademark menace, slick dialogue and deadpan humour. So there we go. <laughs> From now on, with the good to bad and the what the fuck, I'll just read the back of the box. That was Freaky Dicky, and the next, next, next and final one is a nice surprise. See you in the next one. Hello, right, okay, so the final one is, I'm just having my hand, where'd it go? It's here, that's the pile of stuff to do. Oh, it's hiding right at the bottom. Is Jimmy Hollywood, ever heard of it? Now, Jimmy Hollywood was one I tried to look for for years. It's one that was made in between cuffs coming off the back end of Pump Up the Volume. And like cuffs and Pump Up the Volume, it seems to have fallen into obscurity and just 
disappeared. So Christian Sierra was shit at the time again. Um, Joe Pesci stars along inside this. Harrison Ford has a cameo in it as well. Um, Jimmy Hollywood. Now it popped up on Music Magpie. It's sixteen pound. I was like, <sighs> didn't even know it was fucking released in the UK. Checked it. It was legit a very limited run. And yes, I bought the bullet and paid for it because even if you look on eBay, you're gonna pay that anyway. Maybe it's a bit more. It came, and of course, typical Music Magpie. The disc was loose. Now I'm sure the unboxing takes place either in this outtake or it's in. John Cusack or Christy or oh, Arrow because this is the last of the the last of the Nicholas Cage, John Cusack, Arrow and Christian Slater. You know, the absolutely what the fuck's going on. Now this one's quite cool because it's set on a sunset strip. Um there's not a lot going on. Jimmy Palladino, what do you want to call him? We'll just call him Jimmy Hollywood. Is a guy who wants to be an actor, even pays for a billboard. Uh, for a bench seat outside Sunset Boulevard, just out of Bel Air. Christian Slater seems to forget everything. He's always forgetting stuff. Just seems to be his, his sidekick, really. Um, Jimmy goes around and he basically has a few auditions. Doesn't go really well. He's got no credibility acting to his name. Knows the Hollywood stars off the top of his head. And again, walking around with William, Christian Slater. He's struggling. And he's obsessed with carrying his car radio and one day gets nicked. Now... His girlfriend at the time as well is also supporting him and he's cleared out her bank account. The guy who's been in loads of films, got loads of tattoos on his chest and that, mainly pops up in Steam Cigar films. Shuri's in um, Death Race, you'll know I'm on about the same. He pops up and she tries to mug somebody at the cash point. Um, and then basically he just follows Jimmy. And Jimmy gets a bit angry that someone stole his car radio and they scout out for a few days, waiting in the bushes and they finally get him. Massive video recorder, one way you could see the screens. And he walks up and he basically arrests him, throws him outside the police station. And, you know, next thing you know, SOS, Save Our Streets, begins. Because um, Christian Slater uses a label and printer, slaps it on there. But Jimmy sort of goes, oh, this is a good role. And creates a character called Jericho, who's a borderline, like, vigilante. And it pursues that. They keep sending tapes in. They go out there. They're not afraid. Chico, who pops up in a lot of my podcasts... Uh, we always call him Chico, who's a guy from Running Man who got his head blown off. He appears in this. Um, as I say, J Joe Pesci delivers amazing performance, and Christian Slater just, you know, he's charming in this, you know what I mean? It's a very offbeat movie. Uh, it's a 15. Um, the, the FBI and the police start to track down Jimmy Holly Jimmy, as he's always trying to, like, he's waiting for his big break in Hollywood, and it's just not coming. So he really tries to put his life into it. Um, I've seen this originally on Netflix. It popped up. Um, I'm not going to say it's a what the fuck film. I'm not going to say it's a bad film. I just it just sort of misfires slightly between good and bad. Um, it's a nice polished film. It's a Barry Levinson film as well. So yeah, I've enjoyed it because I think Christian Slater is really good in it. Although Christian Slater is just you know keeping the, the the engine going in this movie. It's really Joe Pesci's movie. I don't think Joe Pesci really suits the long blonde hair. I don't know, maybe I've seen Goodfellas in Casino far too many times to really take in the fact that Joe Pesci's got loads of blonde flaying hair. It's definitely a wig. But yeah, Jimmy Hollywood was the surprise one at the end. This is the 40th film for the Christian Slater. I've, I've talked about it before, a few of these have been in it. I know Hot Tub Time Machine too, but fears that um, a few others have gone through. But as I reminisce back, we've also got The Wizard in this so this is wrapping this up so we've got the wizard which i think was amazing because of the whole king kong references and stuff especially when they turn up with the king kong ride i just absolutely love that and i also remember the wizard as a kid lords you know like again super mario brothers 3 living through that era then to discover that christian slater is in it as well so yeah there's two i would put the wizard is good cult good as well right back with here freaky diggy finally opened it yep i had it eight years before it was opened um, Total Misfire, again, I think I made it what the fuck on a bad film, mainly because Christian Slater is not the biggest star in this. It's Alan Christian Slater, but he gets top billing. Um, Quentin Tarantino style writing, again, it's from the writer of Jackie Brown and Get Shorty, so it's got that offbeat thing. I just think it totally misfires. Totally misfires, so there's three. Next up, Dolan's Cadillac. Um, I was surprised this wasn't in originally. Yeah, based on Stephen King book, Wes Brantley, who Christian Slater worked with, also on Final Rights. I think this just missed fires and as a talk. I'm going to put that in the bad film. Um, as I say, it's mainly, I think Stephen King's mainly went for what do you what, what goes through your mind if you're willing to bury somebody alive in the most awkward place possible. 
Next up, we are the wicket. All the way from New Zealand. This is Anne Christian Sater, so they get that right, but they slap him on the front of the box. Do have this on DVD. There is a few Christian Sater ones buried deep in Arcadia there. Um, that can pull out, but normally it's split face between Christian Slater. There is stuff like the Good Shepherd and stuff. I need to dig out Basil's in there. So there will be a volume five of Christian Slater. That is definitely going to happen. Uh, but this one's, but as I say, really, really, babe. <laughs> Fucking Vinnie Jones said babe once more. So that's five. That's a bad film. Guns, girls, and gambling, trying to get them the right way around. I quite enjoyed that. Very low budget, but looked lush. Mental film. Really, like, not really justified by the front cover, but yeah, if you get a chance to check that out, get it. Um, so, see, that's the kind of film I've talked about before. If you don't get it first time around, it just disappears in obscurity. Um, next up, Suicide Squad. Hell to pay. Um, I didn't enjoy that. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the Marvel. I've talked about the Marvel, so the DC. <laughs> Calm down. Whoa, keep the hate going. I just, I, I think it's cool that they make these violent cartoons and all that but again it's just all over the place you know what i mean i've seen a few of them and you watch them and yes you don't know what's going to do because they're not afraid in the cartoons just to fucking behead somebody and that character's dead for that story you know what i mean like batman's fucking crazy in the future and all that and the reverse flash is going through time and all that and it's like right that makes all right it makes sense like a cartoon but you try and bring that in any kind of realm it's just fucking mental mental um and then we've got Hot Tub Time Machine 2, that has been in the good, the bad and what the fuck's before. But again, it was revisited for John Cusack and Christian Sater. Sort of set the role they're all on. Um, I would have cast Christian Sater instead of him in the movie. If that was available. It still ba baffles me about the whole John Cusack's in it, but not. And the last two, Without Men. Now, Without Men might be coming to the channel on a review rant random. I'm going to actually ask Brittany to watch this. So she can actually give an honest one. What a mental film that was. What an absolutely misleading cover. But yeah, that was without men. Holly, uh, Churchill comes to Hollywood. There's another one. And last but not least, Wind Talkers. That I believe has been in. But again, it's the director's cut. Uh, as I say, I quite enjoyed that film. Yeah, when I've been thinking about it and talking about people with it. Um, it was a nice box set to flick through that as well. So that's been Christian Sarah, The Good, The Bad and The What The Fox, Volume 4. As I say, that whoa, as I say, as it breaks on another floor, the last volume was boom, over two and a half years ago. And yes, if you check that out, Christian said that actually is in the video, which is awesome. And um, that would be wrong with cuffs. As I say, the next one's going to be Eddie Murphy. As I say, I'm going to start Eddie Murphy as well. I think he's going to start today. Um, and I will come back to Christian Sater once I start sorting and digging all this up because I think there's at least 10 films. I can get. I think we're back to the sea. I'm Fern Gully on VHS. Get that out of the moment. But yeah, I'll see you in the outtakes. <laughs> That's a fucking absolutely legit outtake as fuck. Brittany's actually watching Without Men and she's just reacted to Gordon Smith. Right as I was about to go and get a t shirt. I don't know what's worse. He's now take fit. Me phone vibrating on the PlayStation, just going into overtime. It's never that loud. Okay. Okay, here in the outtakes. Christian Slater, the good, the bad, and the what the fucks. No, this is not Abraham. I've just got a bad voice because I've just done a massive rant about a room. Came in here, went, oh, I need to film somebody else. Put the camera down. Camera fell. It's recording. Bang. That's done. Because this is just a quick rant about hard rain. Dun, dun, dun. Um, hard Rain has been a fast forward review. It has appeared in the Good, the Bad, and the What the Fox. It even might have been as fast forward reviews within the Good, the Bad, and the What the Fox, but it's been that long, I don't remember. Um, we, we, me, Carl, and Jack watched this last night for a podcast. I um, actually bought that on um, Music Magpie. It was going for £40 at one point. I was like, fuck, right off. Came down to eight. Fair enough, eight pound is the average price for a new Blu-ray. It's in good condition. The box, you know. So we watched it. It's not going to be counted as one of the ten. Just an outtake. Uh, so say the podcast should be out or coming out around this time, so you can hear us watch it. Um, didn't really enjoy it the second time. I mean, I love the film when I see the pictures, 
but again you can kind of look forward to again the angle being like this being a bit more fun and fun 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 ah fucking no it's just a fucking outtake it's weird taking in Jack and Carl's point of view if you listen to the podcast because Carl said he's never going to watch it again Jack had some questionable content about it I personally love it I think it's one of Christian Taylor's better films that didn't perform that well there's a couple of things I personally probably would have tried to uh, fix with it make it a bit more grittier make the bad guys more evil maybe he's trying to push it towards an 18 but again it's just what it is it was didn't want to be a disaster film I like the the um title for it i've loved the poster again check out the review but yeah just an outtake see you in the next outtake he's a random outtake because it's dark as fuck the true romance poster there you go next outtake a little bit more light and it's very dark in this room now these days especially when eight round broke them over lights but I think he's not in this video, which will probably make him a bit angry. He's an outtake. He's from concert two. Right, so basically, in a nutshell, it starts raining, it gets hard, kills the whole village, and then there's Morgan Freeman and Christian Sale next. Right, we're going to go for that. Are you ready, Carl? <laughs> uh, I am in two so Because Jack's late. We've had to speed this up tonight. Why? Nah. Because I'm going to be up there again early in the morning, motherfucker. Oh, I... Why have we been left out of this video? Hmm? Let's go and play on the chaos. Mm -hmm.